Hello everyone and welcome back to Inspire Radio. You're here with Jack and Danny and Apple. And I have a very special guest with me today called Barry. Barry, hi. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you for, and, uh, for allowing me to be here. Oh, that's lovely and that's my pleasure. And I was just wondering if you could tell me a bit about yourself. Okay, so I we live in the Swan Valley and we've lived up that way for 15 years since I uh, emigrated to Australia and uh, married to Christy, who is Charlie's mum. So, yeah. So how many years has that, that been? I've uh, been in Australia for 16 years. And how many years have you been married? Uh, 14. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Nice. And tell us about Charlie. Okay. Yes. So Charlie is an amazing boy. Uh, we call him the most unique uh, person in Western Australia and quite possibly Australia. He has two rare conditions. Charlie's main rare condition is DMD, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It's a degenerative uh, muscle wasting condition and uh, it's uh, degenerating all of Charlie's muscles. Um, his second condition is PHPV, which is persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous, trace, uh, which means he's probably about 85 to 90% blind in one eye. Now, on that basis, if um, you're in a wheelchair and you're also blind to a certain extent, it, uh, it created a unique different talent again. Yeah. Yeah. That must be really hard and very, very difficult. I can't imagine how that feels. Yeah, if, if someone can relate somehow, that's you, Jack, eh? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm glad that I'm able to talk. I, I know that my disability isn't any different to Charlie's, but I know I've been through a lot in my life, and for that I'm very grateful to where my life has got me to be now, allowing me to be here to talk to you and to and to tell you how much I love being here at the radio. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. Um, Charlie is 12 years old and the uh, the prognosis for a child with Duchenne muscular dystrophy is, is an average age of 26. Uh, a couple of things that make Charlie's story so unique is that he was four and a half years late being diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Uh, one of the main reasons was um, because he had an, uh, an eye operation at the age of three, He's got a very cautious nature and, and balance as well was one of his major focuses. And it wasn't until Charlie started falling over that we realised there was another issue with Charlie. And <coughs> the, the late diagnosis, um, the two rare conditions, and one of the things that also makes Charlie conditions so rare, he's actually got a duplication of the exon. Uh, whereas most boys with Duchenne muscle dystrophy have a deletion in the exon. Um, and that's another unique challenge for us and Charlie. Yeah, it sounds very, very uh, upsetting and I can't imagine how that feels for you guys. But can I ask, how, how do you get th- through it? Uh, every day is a unique challenge. Every day that we still have Charlie with us is a bonus. Um, we don't know how long we're going to have Charlie. And what we're trying to do is t- obviously to make the most of it, make great memories and experiences for Charlie. Yes. And to um, try and allow him to fulfil his life to the best of his ability. So I've never, I never heard of this before as well. Um, so how rare exactly is it? Is it one of the only in, in the state or in a certain... Is there, like, okay, awareness so things for it? So there is 70 boys in Western Australia with this condition, uh, about 900 boys in Australia. It uh, affects probably one in about 3,000 to 500 boys on average. Um, and all up, there's about 300,000 people in the world with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It is 99.9% boys. And the average on a girl having Duchenne muscular dystrophy is about 1 in 50 million. Mm-hmm. That's really it's weird. <laughs> Something to do with the genes, I guess. It's a genetic condition. Um, and, and so what do we do about that? Do we try and build the awareness about this? So there's uh, awareness is, is key. Uh, because had we known 
about Charlie, you know, the average um, diagnosis for a boy with Duchenne muscle dystrophy is between three and four, whereas Charlie was eight and a half. Oh. So the our goal to raise awareness is because we have organisations in Western Australia, we have organisations in Australia, they are channeling clinical trials and research. We don't have the capacity to, to, to reach out to that degree. So our, um, our challenge is to look after Charlie and our challenge is to facilitate his life. Mm. Yep. Because it'd be better yeah. if, if you get that if you get that sort of diagnosis sooner and sort of plan, plan it a bit, bit better and obviously knowing sooner is going to be a lot easier and, and better for you in the long run. Yeah, so, so we're, 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 trying to, we're trying to, so we've, Charlie's only uh, 18 months approximately now with his uh, wheelchair. Um, Charlie's got a sit-to-stand uh, powered wheelchair. Um, that is all NDIS funded, as is most of his um, assistive technology. Um and yeah, it's uh, in 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 my opinion, it's it's just quite a unique and rare situ- situation we're in. Mm. Yeah. Is it anything like Jack's like sort of chair or, or predicament? It's quite similar in terms of the setup, from what I can see. Um, but um, I was actually talking to a lady yesterday, for example, at one of the major mining uh, corporations in Perth, and she was actually blown away when I explained to her that Charlie's wheelchair can sit to stand. What does what does that what does that mean? I haven't heard that it term. Basically, um, it, it will allow him to stand aided. Ah, uh, yeah. So Charlie's on the prognosis of being not um, non ambulant within possibly three to six months. Mm. So he only um, minimally walks at home, bathroom to the bedroom to the dining table, and to the wheelchair. Yep. A bit of very minimal in terms of his. Um, what he walks because he's very high in his tip toes. Yeah. Um, and thus his wheelchair will become his only form of transport. Mm, mm. And it, does he access the community like that? In like uh, like Jack when he, he comes out with the certain organisations and stuff. Do you uh, obviously it's you sometimes, but do you does he come out with a, a company? As yeah. Well? So we've um, we've had a couple of fundraisers last year. And Charlie has spoken at the fundraisers. Mm. Um, Charlie's just uh, been accepted onto the committee of the Youth Disability Advocacy Network in Perth. And he's actually got his first meeting tomorrow night. So it's in terms of getting out and about, out and about in the community, yeah. Yeah, it sounds incredible. Incredi- How was the fundraiser? How did it go? Fundraisers have been very successful. Uh, but to me... For us personally, it's not about raising money, it's about raising awareness. Yes. Definitely. Um, not the money, the, the awareness is more important. Absolutely. So Jack, do you have any more, any more questions about, about that? Um, no, I think I'm out of questions, really. I'd just like to ask, like, how, how is an, a normal day for you guys? I, I don't think it's normal. You said each day is a challenge, right? It is a challenge. So yeah. So I'll, just I'll, g- I'll give you some of the examples example, of what Charlie yeah. can So we can, can understand, can give that our awareness out. So Charlie cannot uh, put his shoes on, cannot put his socks on, struggles to get dressed, um, struggles to have a shower. Uh, so we help him in the shower. We help him brush his teeth because he, does, he can't stand in the bathroom to brush his teeth. He'll sit down and we'll uh, facilitate bringing his toothbrush and things like that. Uh, things like combing his hair. I mean, one of the classics is Charlie's never used a knife when he's eating. All his food is cut up for him. Mm. Um, prior to being diagnosed, uh, Charlie would often choke, and we didn't know why, mm. because the throat muscles are a critical part of eating. Okay, so that's affected by the condition as yeah, well. It's it's, it's it's a whole body. It's not you only have so many muscles right. in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. so many. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the the outset is it's an, it goes lower limbs, upper limbs, uh, torso, and it basically ends with the heart and lungs. Mm. Yep, it's very harsh. I know, I know Jack could probably relate to that in, in, to a certain extent. Some of the things that you 
you can't do and need help with um, when we go out? Yes. Well, I know things have been hard for me in my life, but I, I do find a, find a way to get through them. And yes, I do, do need help with a little bit of things sometimes, like lighting to- toileting, going to the to- toilet. If it's other to- toilets, I can... I can go to the bathroom at home, but I need help stuff when it comes to showering, but I'm able to brush my teeth by myself. So so this is like uh, a 24-hour thing for you guys? Do you have someone at home or it's, it's all up to you? We will have carers in the future. At the moment, it's uh, family. So um, my mother-in-law is a big help to us. Uh, me and my wife both work full-time still possibly another year or two for her, and then she'll become uh, Charlie's main carer. Um, Charlie is progressing this year to high school, which is a big transition for him. Mm-hmm. But this mainstream high school, um, you know, people still ask me, um, is he at mainstream school? And he's, there's never been any consideration to him not being at mainstream school. Um, Charlie doesn't have learning difficulties. Uh, a lot of boys with Duchenne muscular dystrophy do. Um, we don't know if that's Exxon related, but it's, it's something we're very thankful for. Yeah, definitely. So he's got the capacity to speak about his condition as well. So he's he's his best advocate as well. So him speaking and giving that awareness yep. will make more people aware of the... So the aim is to get him talking at as many events and functions as possible to raise awareness. Because what people can't see with what I'm doing, they're not. S- they understand about him, but they don't see him. So the aim is to get him out and about in the community mm. to raise awareness. I think it'd be great if you got him in here as well, to even just to talk to Jack. Yeah, we we something. would love to m- m- meet him one one day. That is after when the school ho- holidays are over, if that's okay with you. It would be amazing to 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 um to bring him in here and meet you guys. I'd just yes. like to ask something else as well. Like, have you guys um established our found a foundation or something have you some done something on on that level scope we have looked into it what we've done is we've created charlie's hope uh which is our um it's going to be his legacy as such but not a foundation or charity yet um simply because what we've found is it, if you're if you it's very difficult to advocate for a charity um th- that's behind one person yeah it's um there's a raft of paperwork to fill in, there's a raft of fees to pay, but the final tick in the box is who benefits from the charity, and a one-person charity is the biggest challenge you have. If it's if it's a charity that's going back out to the community as a whole, different ballgame. Yeah, I, I, w- I, I wouldn't think about it as a one-person thing. I'll think about it as a foundation on awareness on this, you know, condition, and Charlie being the advocate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But we do have in in not just the state, we do have the likes of Save Our Sons, mm-hmm. who are a foundation and a charity. We do have Duchenne Australia, who are again our foundation and a charity, and we do have Muscular Dystrophy WA, which supports okay forty muscular dystrophy uh, types of muscular dystrophy. So another one with me that kind of relating to Jack's well, like you know how say if you go out for dinner somewhere is do you find that a lot of places are diverse enough to, to allow them to get in and, and eat and just, just normal stuff like that? Because Jack has sometimes problems with that. And it's I find it so irritating because we go out on the weekend sometimes and we can't get into certain places and pubs and It's an absolute... It's, it's the biggest challenge. In, in my limited time of, of understanding about wheelchairs, there's two types of disability... There's Jack's and Charlie's wheelchair type, and there's a manual wheelchair type. Mm. You can yes. you can you can modify a manual wheelchair into any situation. Yeah, you cannot modify a powered wheelchair into most situations. In what context is that? Like you can fold it up, and or or you can or you can, move it. You can uh, basically l- almost pick it up over a step. Yeah, a manual wheelchair. If you can if you can um, dip it. Yeah. Even with a person in or out of it, if they're able to, man, uh, um, powered wheelchair, there's absolutely no way. Mm, they're uh, so heavy. They're yeah. so heavy. I mean, Charlie's is 170 kilos. Oh wow! Add add him to the equation, 
and you'll only ever get it bogged one time in my life. Yeah. And I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't intend doing that again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it sometimes comes down to about that, that yeah, one little it's, step it's, and it's, then it's, it's, you want to get on the other side. It keep, if you look at the uh, basis of um, different surfaces and then all it takes is that one step or one lip, yeah. people think that's acceptable. Yes, it's acceptable for a manual wheelchair, but that yeah. that's why I say there's two different types of yeah. disability. Yeah. Yeah. That's something else that we have to advocate for, right? So being able to get around. Yes, well, getting yeah. around is the main issue for me sometimes. Like when Danny said when we go out, you know, it's hard for us what, what we go through my myself because most restaurants you can't even can't even get the wheelchair in because there's, there's n- no ramp. Like it's physically impossible. Mm. And toilets, isn't it, as well? There's some of them yeah. are just useless. Like, the really the toilets are horrible. Bar. I can't even hold on to a bar properly. And can you imagine how that feels? There's, there's an, a, a situation that we've been in many times. You go to excellent facilities and you go to very poor facilities. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And there's, there, there's no one standard. There's no... It, it's just one sc- end of the scale to the other. Yeah. yeah. There, there should be a committee or something that, you know, goes through all these... The hospitality venues or... Yeah. What kind of com- committee? A committee. I, I was in one in Greece where um, I would give a uh, license to a uh, hospitality venue. So if you did not have, um, you know, a wheelchair, you know, availability or, you know, um, lifts or, you know, those kind of things, you did not get the license. So Yeah, but wouldn't that wouldn't have that been hard and, like, d- difficult both at the same time? No, you have to, to get to be able to serve... The public, the public and the customers or the public, you have to have all these, you've got to tick all those boxes, right? So if you don't tick all those boxes, you do not open. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. going forward, I think we've, we've got many harsh laws here for everything else. How about they police this more yeah. and they give, they give yes. these, these people the, uh, you know, the, the ability... It, it, to get it, it almost comes down to human rights that people just seem yes to exactly it's, it's a basic, it's, it, I think it's it's, it's, the, right. it's the um fourth human we, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had a guy in here though I actually can't remember his, his name or, or what the company was called I know he's just starting it but it's like a map um, I'm not sure if it's just Perth but it's a map and um when people go there like say Jack was signed up to it when he goes to a certain venue they sort of review it, so you yep. can look on that and see how they went there and what their comments were on the accessibility. Is that and more stuff? for a restaurant point yeah. of view rather than a facilities point of view? I'm not sure how yep. far it goes, but I mean, you could start there and then build to that. Yes. But I know it was just a startup. But those sort of ideas take it to your own hands, sort of sort of thing. You shouldn't have to. I mean, it should be the government's consider. Well, we don't want to be like tattletales as well, like not going giving bad reviews to everyone. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we no, want yeah. the government to go. In and look at all these buildings, all these facilities, you know, the hospitality, the hotels, the venues, you know, can we g- get in and out? And as we said, it is human rights yep. mm. you know, to, to travel freely. It's, yep. yeah, it's... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I feel it's un- unfair for, for me what I have to go through sometimes. I know that that's no different to what you go through with Charlie and I'm not trying to change the subject... It's just whenever mum and I go out, we plan to have a good time. Sometimes I feel like it ends in disaster for us and that's the last thing that we need. If you have a bad experience... It's well, we have had bad experiences you don't, you don't before. You want to go back to those places and you want to find places that you can have a good experience at. Yeah. And it's as simple as getting in, getting out, going to the bathroom. And, yeah, and especially when it's a challenge each day, as you say, Barry, is a challenge to get up and about and out of the house. And yes, uh, this this kid, like all kids that age, want to get out, yep. want to feel that air, want to feel that freedom, that sunlight, yet um, we give them more barriers. It's not enough that they have these barriers to go through. We give them more barriers, and that's just shocking. We have to help. And, you know, we have a voice here. We're, we're voicing this. This is our opinion, right? So we're voicing that we need more. Yeah, we're being truthful at the end of the 
di- vo- voicing our opinions on how we feel. And I know that this is frustrating for you guys, and I understand that. I'm not trying to change the subject. We're just trying to tell tell us of like how we feel towards this situation. And I can't imagine what Charlie goes through, how hard that must be for you and your wife, Barry. So, and for that, I'm I'm sorry because I kind of feel a bit sad for you guys. Thank you. But that's what you know. Your mum, your mum looks after you as well, which is when she does a good job at that. I I know, yeah. and I know so. I was. I know I was born. They told me that I might n- not talk, but look at me now. I'm, I'm a bright, shiny person that can just talk, and I've got a happy life. Mm. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yeah, and you brighten all of us. I brighten all of you guys for sure. Because, however, I am an inspiration. Mm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And and and, and, so, about, um, and so is Charlie here. Yeah. He's, yes. He's giving That's his. Well, you know. His, his battle and his parents, like, like we are looking and focusing on Charlie, but... We uh, have to be his advocates. Yeah, his advocates, but we have to give a huge shout-out to you guys as well for the the compassion and the strength that you possess to to take on this and show him and, show him and show the rest of uh, the world and all of us how hard it is, but yet we don't... You know, we don't put it down and we fight. We want to make an impact for Charlie. Mm. Um, that will make an impact for all boys with Duchenne muscle dystrophy, I believe. But our sole control at the moment is we, we have control of Charlie. You know, mm. We're doing it for him. Yes. Does Charlie have, you know, any hobbies that he's in, interested in? So one of Charlie's biggest things at the moment is uh, PC gaming. And yes. And how often does he like to do, do that? Can I ask? Most days. Yeah. <laughs> Most days. yeah. yeah. Simply because he's, he's um, limited range in the house. Um, he does spend a lot of time on his games and PC. Um, <laughs> his aim, um, and he's done a bit of it in the past, is to get into something like coding. Yeah. Um, which I believe is very up and coming. Yeah. Um, well, that does sound like a go- good idea. Because yeah. I, I love clothing. And one of the biggest things that he... Um, and all boys in in wheelchairs is virtual reality. Mm. Oh, it's, it's yeah, because that's a scape. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's yeah. a good way of... Um, I've never yeah. actually thought about that, but yeah. yeah. Just just thinking it now just yeah. gives you that vision. You could walk a... Yeah. Walk yeah, around. I mean, yeah. Danny's into skateboarding. I mean, he, he loves skateboarding. That's what he loves to do. Mm. But then, like, if you get into that sort of world, you can... Um, VA, virtual... Maybe right. not physically, but it, mentally. Yes. And it can also just help, yep. you know? Well, at least yeah. you could try. Yeah. Have you ever done that? Have you ever used a virtual reality thing? <laughs> no. I mean, I haven't done it before because I wasn't sure how it would go, really. But maybe I yeah, should really give it a try. Too, eh? yeah, I would, I would highly recommend trying to get some experiences. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd love to. Do do anything, really. So does does um do you have one at home? No. Do you, nope. do you use or you... Um, We've had some experiences, mo- mostly through things like Charlie's Make-A-Wish. Uh-huh. Um, so Charlie had his Make-A-Wish in uh, 2019, 2020. And it was actually to make a, a robot. A, a robot that does seem pretty cool. To, that was controlled by his iPad. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. To, to control what? Controlled by his iPad. Oh, his iPad. Sorry, I thought I misunderstood. I thought you said he, he's... Um, a- angry, like when he gets angry. No, no, no. <laughs> well, the, one of the reasons it's um, it, it's set up and it was cr- recreated from a um, based on Minecraft, but it's actually been built with a um, what's one of those guns? The the, the guns that shoot the nerf gun. The nerf guns, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Getting a, a nerf gun inbuilt in it. So you have a robot in the house. Yeah. <laughs> Does he shoot you with it? We don't use it. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it was more the concept of yeah. Charlie, but, you know, yeah, the yeah. guys at Woodside did it, um, and, and they built it. Oh, yeah. But it was his input and his... Uh, his feedback his that feedback he, ga- he gave in, to in him. In the, pro- in the progress, that's what got him interested. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the things was um, just, just the whole technology behind well, it. Going forward, like the technology and all that, we've seen a lot of movies out there how people can't move at all, right, and can 
move objects or can move yes uh vehicles or whatever and there has been a lot of you know uh research and techno- on technology about that yeah. how is it on this side of the the globe because we know in America they're bigger than that uh, it's, it's it's up and coming um the, the the thankful thing we've got is lots of resource and mining companies do use a lot of that technology and it's just been able to tap into some of that situation and hopefully we should be able to do that with Charlie hopefully this year. Well, that's great news. So what high school is Char- Charlie going to next year? So Charlie starts at Ellenbrook, uh, uh, Holy Cross College in Ellenbrook on the 31st of January. Oh, that sounds fun. He must be excited for a new chapter of high school. He's, uh, I think there's a bit of 50-50 apprehension and, and, uh, and excitement. Uh, the apprehension is towards how yeah. he will be... Perceived at school. Yep. Um, we don't know of any other uh, children at the school in a wheelchair. The interesting thing, the primary school that Charlie just came from, he was one of two boys in our... Um, where we live that has the same condition. Um, they both went to the same school, whereas Charlie's moving to high school. And, then, and obviously, through um, not, you know, not all his primary school are following to the same school. So he won't be at school with most of his mates. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So it's also building a new friendship. And it's, like well, you know, going forward, you will make changes in your life. You'll meet new friends. What I want to ask is that, are the educators of that new school able to tackle Charlie and um, good luck to them <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah I mean they, they, they're all aware in terms of uh, Charlie's uh, challenges his condition um, we've had Charlie's occupational therapist and um, team go out to the school so that's all um, in situ and in progress and hopefully it should it could still be quite a smooth transition well the more people that that are aware and can advocate and m- pave the way for him yep. and for all other kids it's it's a win yeah absolutely yeah uh, as i've always said it's it's about raising awareness yeah not the money it's about the awareness at it, the end it, of the it, day it, it will all through it will all flow through past charlie so hopefully not just to boys with Duchenne, not just to people with a, a PHPV, but to all people with disabilities. Yes. So do you have any questions for Jack, or, or do you have any questions to, to finish it up? I, am, I, I don't have, have any questions, really. I, I've ran out. Okay, so let me just uh, thank you on behalf of all of us here. Yes, um, we, we, we want to say thank you. We thank you for coming in and showing this, uh, the awareness and, you know, you know voicing you know, Charlie's and your family's challenges and hopefully we can renew our, you know, appointment for a, a new day with Charlie here. And that yeah, because be as we said, we'd really love to meet him if that's okay. Mm. It'd be, uh, be an inspiration for him to meet you guys. Yes, it'll be on YouTube too, so you can show them all this and everything. <laughs> Absolutely. And hopefully, uh, hopefully, blow up like mm. a few other ones that we've got. <laughs> yeah, it has blown up for us quite a bit. All the videos that we've got on YouTube, but we've 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 really enjoy, enjoyed talking to you, Barry. This means a lot to us being at the radio, as I mentioned before. And being at the radio, and not only being at the radio, but giving. Uh, our voice giving our voice to, t- to tell it, you yeah. our, our opinion of, about how we feel Fantastic. is what what makes me feel stronger every day and i do wish Char- charlie the best for his future thank you so much you're welcome barry that's my pleasure thank you for coming in thank you barry <laughs>